Today I'm going to share my collection of ocarinas by Akita from Japan, the inventor of the 12-hole ocarina. Stay tuned. <laughs> What's up, Akamigos? My name is David, and welcome to part two of my Ocarina collection series, where each video I'm going to share a set of Ocarinas from a specific time period, region, or a maker. And today we're going to be focusing on the Japanese Ocarina maker, Akita. But before we do that, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you know whenever I post any music video, tutorial, or review. Now in the last episode to kick off this series, I shared one of the rarest ocarinas in my collection, the C04 by Sochiro, and if you haven't checked that out, I highly recommend you watch that first by clicking right up here. And in that video, I mentioned Sochiro's mentor and teacher, Hisashi Kayama, who is responsible for teaching some of the best and most respected ocarina makers in all of Japan. Well, as far as I understand it, Hisashi's teacher was actually Takisha Akitagawa, who started making ocarinas in 1928 after discovering a 10-hole ocarina from Europe what I'm suspecting was a Fane or EWA, and I have a whole bunch of them up here in this top row, and we'll talk about those in a future video. So this was the birth of the brand and company Akita Ocarina, so named after its maker. And after 20 years of ocarina making, it was in 1948 that he released the very first 12-hole ocarina. This innovation stretched the range of the ocarina from 11 diatonic notes to 13 diatonic notes by adding two little holes we call subholes. It doesn't seem like a lot, but this has since become the standard for single-chambered ocarinas around the world today. Now, if you've ever looked into Japanese ocarinas, you've probably noticed Akita ocarinas can be found pretty much everywhere in music shops across the country. But an interesting note is that they have their own classification system that is by far the most confusing system I've seen from any ocarina maker. So by looking at this picture, the first thing you'll notice is that they primarily focus on C, G, and F ocarinas, which is what most Asian ocarina companies produce today. You'll also notice that there is a letter preceding the model number of each piece, and that's because Akita produces at least three series of ocarinas. The T series, which is their standard set, the RT series, which is their premium set, and then the S series, which I think are just quieter and require less air. Now let's talk about the crazy part. So in my previous video, Tenor Ocarinas Don't Exist, you might remember that there are two classification systems that are widely used around the world. The European system, which is based on the Italian septet. Then you have the Asian system. And again, this was inspired by the Fane system, which also seems to have inspired Akitagawa. So like the Fane system, he starts off with 1C, 2F, and 3G, and then he just goes off the rails. You have the 4F, 5C, which is an alto C, 6E flat, 8E flat, 9G, 10F, 12C, and then the 14 double alto C. Okay, I don't know why he named them this way, but now that I've caught you up, let me share what I have in my collection. So here I have ocarinas from a few different periods, 11 in all, and you can tell which periods they are based on the maker stamp on each one. The oldest one I have in my collection is my 12C or the base C, uh, which has two unique stamps. It does say Prima here, as well as here, and Prima is their longtime partner and distributor, Prima Gaki. This is actually an 11 hole, which isn't super uncommon for the bigger ocarinas. Next up, we have the Maestro series, which actually preceded the RT series. Uh, so these were the premium ocarinas up until the 80s or the 90s, and this is my 5C. This is the Maestro 2F the Maestro 3G, and then the Maestro 1C. Then they started to transition to include the Akita stamp as well as the Prima. So this is one of the pieces I have in the middle period there. You can see it says Prima and Akita, and this is a 1C from that period. And then today we just have the Akita stamp, uh, which is the one that they're using still today. This is the 5C, this is the 2F, and then as I mentioned, they have two other series, the Sonata series, uh, the S5C, and this is probably one of my favorites in this set. Uh, it just has such a really beautiful tone and breath slope, I love it. And then they have the RT series, which I only have one piece in my collection, and I got it about 12 years ago, brand new, and then I dropped it a few years ago uh, during a performance, which was embarrassing, but really incredible piece. 
So now let's talk about a couple unique features and Easter eggs for the Akita Ocarina. And one of those is the subhole placement. So on most 12 hole Ocarinas today, you might notice that there are two different variations for the subhole placement. One variation is that you have one subhole for each middle finger like this. Another variation is that you have them under the index and the middle finger here under the right hand. But with Akita Ocarinas, they place it the left subhole under the base of the index finger. Do you see that? So you cover the right subhole like this, and then you flatten your index finger like this. It's extremely uncomfortable. But then on their 1C ocarinas, they actually have them both for the right hand, so the right index and the right middle finger, which is, again, a popular variation today. What I was blown away by is that on the RT, 1C ocarinas, there's actually a 13th hole. This is a 13 hole ocarina. I don't know if you saw it before, but it has the both the sub holes for these two fingers and one here. So it actually goes down to a low G, which is crazy. And then one last cool fact, for a period of time, the Japanese company Yamaha, like Yamaha keyboards, uh, actually contracted Akita to produce ocarinas for them. And then Yamaha just slapped their logo on it. So you can see that this ocarina has the Yamaha logo. It's a little bit faded there, uh, but this is actually an RT1C as well. And they also put SC1 uh, so that it would line up with most of the other uh, ocarina manufacturers and makers at the time. So that's it for my Akita set of ocarinas. And since the purpose of these videos is to share how many ocarinas I now have in my collection, let's keep track of them with this counter on every video. And since we already had one ocarina from the first episode, let's add the Akitas in and this is where we're at now. And that's gonna do it for this episode. Thanks so much for watching. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments down below. And a very special thank you to all of my patrons for making this video possible. If you'd like to help support videos like this in the future, consider joining my Patreon page where you can download MP3s, backtracks, sheet music, and a whole lot more. Really appreciate the support. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. Don't forget to subscribe so you can catch the next episode. And until that video, hope you guys have an amazing week. Adios.